Hi again. Let's start talking about tethering on Linux, and I'm using specifically Ubuntu. There are a couple of very popular solutions. One is Entangle, which is that, which I won't start right now in case it does something funky. Um, Entangle, and also you can tether straight out of Darktable. Uh, I've done both. I've mostly used Entangled because it's really rock solid. Uh, it just doesn't it doesn't break, and that's the most important thing to me. Um, Darktable 2.4, I tried that shooting the other night, uh, and it, in a space of an hour, I had to reconnect three times, which is, which is, oh. I love the fact that I can jump in and out of tethering and look at a file in Darktable, but I need it to just work. Um, and 2.4 seemed much more stable than 2.3, but for me, it's not quite there yet, and I don't have the chops to work out why. Um, so I jumped back into this script that I hacked together a few months ago um, cause I, I made it better and now I love it uh, it's also rock solid I've used it on many shoots but um, I, had a, I had a rotation issue that I've now solved so I'm going to switch to this the reason I don't like Entangle two reasons and again thank you, f thank you to the developer for making this tool it's really great um, if you're, if you have no, if this doesn't make sense to you, if these scripts don't make sense to you, then Entangle is a great option. Two things I don't like about it is one was an easy hack. Um, I don't like that it restarts file naming for every session because then I end up with duplicate files. So I did a hack so that it passes the file name through from the camera. It just uses that. But the second thing is a bit of a deal killer for me. It's super frustrating. If I take 30 shots in a studio and then I want to check in and see how things are going. Um, it's not unusual for the camera still be to be downloading and passing those uh, the more recent files down the pipe. Uh, in Tangle, in that scenario, while it's processing a file and downloading a file, it blanks out. So you get this kind of flash of an image and then two, three seconds of nothing, and then a flash of the next image, and it's not until all the images are, download, are downloaded that you can actually look at them, which is super frustrating. So this this solves this. Now, all of these things use Gphoto 2. Um, so you're gonna have to install Gphoto 2, and you're gonna have to install Exif tools, to Exif tool, sudo app kept, and just like the usual. I'm not, no, I'm not gonna go to that level of detail. Um, if this, if what I'm saying doesn't make sense, then probably you should use one of the off-the-shelf tools. Uh, you're going to need Convert if it's not already installed. You're going to need Exif tool, and you're going to need Gphoto 2. And you know Gphoto 2 is working if you type that. Oh. And it finds your camera, as it has. So this is... You probably, if you if you if if you know anything about Bash, then you're looking at this, and it should make complete sense. Um, we are. I'm putting my temporary JPEG files in there because it's on my SSD directory, uh, SSD card, SSD drive, so it's faster. If it doesn't seem to find that I've got some stuff going on already, it creates the directory and pops an image in there from somewhere else just so that it's not falling on its face. Then it's launching just the, the vanilla Nautilus file viewer. It's launching that, pointing at this latest .jpg file. And the great thing about that is we don't have to build any kind of front end because the uh, file viewer the basic file viewer will refresh if that image changes. As long as it's not on a network drive, that's worth knowing. Um, as long as it's on a drive, then if latest.jpg changes, then the display will change, which is awesome. You might have to install, uh, and actually I recommend you install, uh, so, uh, get, what is this? Uh, EOG, EOG plugin. Yeah, so EOG plugins, one of those, there's an EXIF plugin and there's a auto refresh plugin and I don't know if that is there by default, but you need that. So you go into, 
you go into the settings and you just look at the plugins and you make sure that I'll show you in a sec. Um, then it's using GPhoto 2 in a te capture tethering mode and it's calling a script to tell that what to do and this is the script. Basically all that's saying is if a file is downloaded do this stuff. Um, I'm taking the that's the original file so that's the raw file so I'm using EXIF tools because it's the fastest I found to create a JPEG from that raw file and put it into my temporary files temporary area. I'm checking the orientation with EXIF tools if it's rotated then I'm rotating it so that it looks right and then I'm overwriting whatever that file ends up being I'm overwriting latest.jpg so that um, if that doesn't make sense to you then this possibly isn't the right solution for you if it does then like me this could be really useful starting point for the way you want to do like custom DIY tethering so let's just run it um, so mine is called so this is the directory I want to tether into this is where I want my raw files so I'm launching I have this script in the path I'm launching it it's launched I have gnome EOG which is also known as the image file viewer and like I said if you go into preferences you want to make sure in the plugins that this reload image is checked because that's part of the magic secret sauce here now I do not for some reason on my downloaded files both my raw files and my converted JPEGs I do not get this kind of I don't get EXIF here if that's just a problem I'm having and you do have EXIF here then I imagine this whole auto rotate isn't necessary because I imagine this auto rotation actually works if there's EXIF so you may or may not need that that might actually make things worse if this is working I don't know why that is if anybody has any suggestions let me know I do see EXIF on various files I see EXIFs that I've exported from Darktable or GIMP or something but I'm not seeing EXIFs on my raw file straight out of my camera. But anyway, let's do stuff here. So you get various, that's just crap from an old, you know what? That's crap from an old session. Let's, or is it? Let's get it, let's create it, use a new terminal. Just in case. So I'm going to that directory, it's empty, I'm typing k tether, it's not doing much work now and it's this should still be fine even though it was already open, let's take a photo, ooh, slow shutter speed, this isn't going to be about my photography, okay, so that image is the um, my NAF with a JPEG extension so that's the image I cr that's the JPEG I created and then I renamed copied it to latest and I have gnome file viewer happily re displayed it which is awesome um, you see there's a, a little bit of a lag so there's there's a lag, a few second lag before it starts downloading a file. But if you have a bunch of files in the way, you get that lag, but then each one kind of pushes down the line, pushes down the pipe quite quickly. And and what you see is there's no blanking out of one image as it's dealing with the next, and that's really why this is magic for me. Um, now if I do uh, if I do a that was a portrait let's look here so you see there's a remark rotate and overwrite latest it's satisfied this if and that is what we're seeing here 
and I get that, which is awesome. So that's what I just did today that's made me 100% happy that I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use this again. Um, I don't think there's, any, I mean, that's kind of it. It's crazy, it's like, I could even launch, I could skip this whole script and just launch that, just launch that in the, in the shout, in command line that's really what's doing the work. So we're talking about a handful of lines of code. We're using gphoto2 to do its thing. We're using um, XF tools to do its thing. Uh, and if anybody's found a faster way to create an, a JPEG, let me know because, but this is, I mean, it's fast. Um, another thing I like about this is like I, we could put image magic so, a lot slower for creating JPEG from raw convert convert isn't convert part of image magic maybe but I bet there's another I bet there's another JPEG tool that I could put in here to maybe put some kind of a contrast boost or a something uh, along the way now this bugs me that this isn't here but I do have I do have a histogram, which is super important when I'm tethering. Um, so, yeah, this just works. I mean, it's it's basically it's basically the heart of what Entangle uses, and it's the heart of what Darktable uses. I'm pretty sure Dark uses Darktable uses GPhoto too, but it's just stripping all that back and making it super simple. Um, I could probably clean up some of this stuff but I mean it's really straightforward I so the way I tether I have my wrong lens for this but that's a crappy photo why don't I do this right so I have my desk I have my desk set up with dual screen and I'll put that on the other one full screen and then oh, slow shutter speed and then my right hand monitor which has this tethering on it the signal is split so that it's also on this monitor over on my tether cart and then dark table lives on my main monitor over here and I come in sometimes and jump in if I want to really look at an image and make sure I like the exposure but it just kind of works. Uh, so, I in the times that I did use it, it bugged me that the the auto rotate bugged me, and now I fixed that. But very very rarely did it did it fall on its face and when it did I think it was more a camera disconnect so so there you go I hope that's useful um, I I will paste I'll paste these scripts into the comments for what it's worth either that or I'll put them in a git repo or something and put the link to that but really if you this this isn't a hey copy and paste this and you're good to go this is hey if you're a little bit savvy then this could be useful to you. If you're a lot savvy and you see improvements, please let me know. Like I bet this whole, I bet the whole JPEG to raw, checking the orientation and rotate if necessary could be done in one line. Like I know you can do it. Yeah, I know you in with XIF tool you can do ifs and you can execute statements. So if anybody wants to tackle that, please let me know. Um, any other suggestions for enhancement please let me know but but I mean it's just it's great uh, these files are let's look at these file sizes uh, so just control C to drop out of the script there are my raw files in that directory and those are huge as you see 40 45 megs um,
the JPEGs are. Oh, that's interesting. So they're two mag. So I could probably speed the whole thing up by being a little bit more specific about what I want that JPEG to be if XF Tools supports that. Because really, full screen on this monitor, I could probably go could probably go lower and still have really good image. Like I said, uh, that's that's better. It's better light. Um, it's nice and crisp. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Um, it encourages me. If you like my work, like if you like that image, for example, uh, I am... Kiefer Honey Ford Photography on Instagram. And this is where my most recent stuff usually ends up, or at least the sample of it. So great, have a good Sunday, Monday. Have a good Martin Luther King Day if you're watching this today or tomorrow, uh, if I actually upload it today or tomorrow. So have a good one. Take care, bye.